Hello guys, this is PanzerMeister36, and in today's video we're going to be looking at building the T-34 with 57mm gun. These were a limited batch of wartime vehicles to test a high velocity 57mm gun for improved anti-tank performance that didn't quite work out, but they're still a very interesting vehicle. In this video we're going to look at making the specific modifications to the base kit to accurately model the variant we're looking at. But of course we're also going to have to do other modifications just to correct and work with the base dragon kit on its own because the dragon t-34s are always a bit of a hassle and there's plenty of detail improvements we can make so even if you're not modeling this variant i'm sure you'll still have plenty to learn about dragon t-34s in this video this is going to be a full step-by-step in-depth build tutorial but if you have any questions or if i missed anything please feel free to post them in the comments section below because i'm always reading through and answering questions as best as i can as always, I do hope you enjoy the video, and now let's get started. So here's the kit that I'm using as the base. This is the German T-34 by Dragon. Uh, you can use the standard version because you don't need the Beutepanzer conversion parts at all for this. You can use this one or the standard T-34 one or even the cast turret would work. So these kits are not super brand new, they're from the early 2000s and especially some of the suspension parts are a little outdated and chunky, but they're not super visible. You can see the hull here is plenty of bits molded on, some of which we're going to have to actually hack off, which we'll get to later. And these early T-34 kits from Dragon will always have the tracks on sprues because they never molded the initial type of track as a magic track. So these can be a bit of a pain if you need them. Uh, plenty of other dragon kits will actually give you the tracks in a bag like this, magic tracks. But either way, we need a specific type of track for our kit, which is not included here. Let's start with some basic assembly. I use my Tamiya cutters to cut the parts off of the sprue, and then I clean up the attachment remains with my metal files, but of course if you like sanding sponges, you can use those instead. And I glue everything with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. You can see the swing arms. They actually mount into those uh, shock absorber base parts we put in earlier and that helps to line everything up but you can also use a ruler to make sure the swing arms are perfectly aligned. Now do not glue this piece on for the idler wheel because it is very important to have it adjustable when you're putting on the tracks later. Otherwise you can end up with an issue where the tracks aren't meeting up properly. Also don't glue these parts on as Dragon wants you to because you have to glue them on after you put the upper hull on later, otherwise you might have some gaps. Just a quick tip there. Now I'm not going to glue the upper hull on yet because we have to do some surgery here to get rid of all these witness marks and locating tabs for the early style of fuel tanks. These fuel tanks are used in very few Dragon kits, but most kits include them molded on so you 95% of the time have to cut all these things off. And it's just a lot of uh, hacking and sanding. It's not, a, it's, not, it's not really a big issue, it's just time. Just time consuming to clean up all these witness marks and molded on blobs. I polish everything off with 1200 grit sponge at the end there. There's also more witness marks for the plastic, I guess these are the gr ice grouser tie downs for ice cleats. And we're going to use the photo etch options, so I'm going to hack all these molded on blobs and witness marks off. but it's worth it in the end for the detail that the photo etch adds. I'm also gonna hack off the rear fenders because that also looks much better in photo etch. And we also have some locating pins to cut off for stowage bins over here. You can see that we do have the square locating mounts on the real vehicle, those should be there, but the little round pegs in between should not because those are actually locating tabs for the plastic part. So now our vehicle is cleaned up and ready for the actual upgrades. But before I glue the photo watch on, I'm going to do some damage to the plastic fenders. I'm simply using the handle of a hobby blade, and I'm rolling and carefully bending and deforming the plastic fenders to make them look like they're thin sheet metal that's been dented up. Because if you look at vehicles, the fenders definitely get beat up, and this is a great way to make the model look like it's a real, a real thing, and it's. You know, made of metal and it can be dinged up in combat. You can also replace the fenders with photo etch, but that takes a long time and this is way quicker and if you do it right, you know, it probably looks just about as good. 
Now we can put on the photo etch parts. We have little tie down grosser mounts for the bottom here. And then we also have some more on the top. I clean up the little burrs from cutting them off the fret. And then I very carefully glue them in place with some VMS Flexi 5K CA. The upper mounts require some bending, which is a little bit tricky on the such small parts but with a small pair of tweezers, it can be done. Such photo watch details are a little tricky and they take some time, but I think they're definitely worth it for the increased scale effect that these have versus plastic parts. And these photo watch parts are included in the kit anyway, so might as well use them. So here's the plastic chunky alternative, which isn't too bad, but it's, it's definitely like three times thicker than the photo watch. Now I took out some reference pictures and I based the stowage arrangement off of that because it's specific to whatever factory built the vehicle. So we have a large bin on one side, and on the other side here we have a fire extinguisher and a small bin, as well as a jack block included directly above the smaller bin. And later on, I also did go and add some wood grain texture to the jack block to improve its detail. So now our upper hull is all done with our photo etch and tool bins on, and now we can actually glue it onto the lower hull but that is easier said than done because there's always big gaps under the sponsons which you really have to kind of clamp and hold everything in place when you glue it. All right, so now our hull is looking much better. So now let's take a look at the hull front plate. This is the part included in the kit which is a very early style with the early hatch setup also has the pin type tow hooks and these early fenders as well. This is not what we need. Rather, we need something kind of halfway between these other spare plates included in the kit here. On the left is an early style and on the right is a later style. And we need the hinge from the later style, but then we need the bolts along the bottom and the bulge and the shot deflector from the early style. Now how to do this? Well, I found the convenient part in my spares bin from an STZ kit, and that is a hybrid bulge with the early style bulge, but then also the later style hinge. So I hacked off the early bulge from the kit part, and then I installed the weird hybrid bulge part on top of that. And doing so allows us to use the later style standard T34 hatch, but also have the very early hull front plate and then I glued the hull front into place. On the rear, we need to change the handle style on the transmission hatch. You can see in the reference photo, it's a little different than what's in the kit. Cut that off, sand it flush, and then I bent the appropriate handle shape out of some spare copper wire. Once bent, I glued the part into place with some super glue. All right, now for the tow hooks. This is another unique modification we need to make for the vehicle. So looking at the reference pictures here, you can see we need this type of tow hook. But it's a little more complicated than that. First of all, on the hull rear, we have to actually hack off the molded on pin type tow hooks like I talked about earlier on the hull front because these are the wrong type for a specific version. And also on the hull rear, we need to actually change the shape of the tow hook itself by cutting off this second little nub and then we reshape it and smooth it out so it looks like one big cast part. I also added some bolts here, but these really should be rivets. I changed that after the video. There also should be only four on the front parts, not six. So over here on the left is the hull front style tow hook, and that's a rear one. You can see the reshaping. In the Dragon T34 kits, you get two options for the hull vents. You've got the early type here, and the standard type, which is what we're gonna use for our specific version. You also have options for the, the vent on the back. This one is a molded plastic part, which doesn't look that good. I much prefer the option here where you can add a piece of photo etch. Now this doesn't look too bad, honestly. With a wash, it probably would look half decent, so if you're not one for photo etch, that'll work. But I've got some photo etch. It's actually included in the kit, but I also had a spare piece that was already prepared, so I just went with that one. I slightly round the part by rolling it over my hobby blade and then I simply glue it in place with some super glue. I also super glued on the photo etch parts, again included in the kit, for the rear fenders. 
And on the hull front, I thinned down and also bent up the fenders, much like we talked about earlier in the video. You could get some aftermarket photo etch parts to replace these front fenders and also the main fenders, but that requires a lot of bending and soldering and it takes a lot more time when bending it by hand and with a tool like this, it looks almost as good and it's much easier for someone like me. On the edges and corners here of the, uh, the bend in the fender, I just thinned it down and shaped it and smoothed it to look like bent metal, simply using a hobby blade. Then I glued these parts into place. It looks really, really good and matches with the rest of the fenders. Now let's move on to the turret. This is the style included in the kit, which is a standard early T-34 turret with the rounded corner and the smaller bolted rear plate. This is not what we need. What we need for our specific version is what's called the 8-bolt rear turret, which is a slightly different modification that was introduced later in 1941. As you can see, there is no curve there. The rear plate is simply wider and has a sharper corner, like this. This turret is included as a spare part in the 1942 Stalingrad factory vehicles by Dragon. Here's the two kits. They're bad kits, but they have the right part for our kit. The turret assembly on these Dragon T-34s goes together very quickly, and the parts fit together all right. I configured the roof to have one open periscope with the photo watch part included in the kit, one plugged periscope, and then this style of ventilator as per reference photos of one of the vehicles. And yes, this is the photo watch part. It looks much better than the plastic part if you're gonna have the periscope cover open. When it comes to some of these really, really small parts like these lifting hooks, it can be sometimes easier to actually sand them while they're still partially mounted on the sprue because this saves some time holding the tiny part where it might ping away in your tweezers into oblivion. As I said a minute ago, the turret fits together all right, but there are a bunch of gaps around the welds on the front there, which doesn't quite look good. There's also a gap on the top here where there should be a weld, and there's other missing welds as well. So first I simply scraped off the molded on weld because it's raised off the surface, and then I filled the gap next to it with Tamiya putty. Once the putty was dry, I sanded everything smooth, much like we did previously when hacking off all those big blobs in the side of the hull. Polish it off at the end to make it nice and smooth. And then I redid all the welds with some Archer resin weld decals. Now sadly, Archer's out of business, but their products are still available online on eBay and such, and they're definitely helpful for people like me who don't want to do it all by hand with putty. These work just like decals. You soak them in warm water for a little bit, put them in place, and you can get them to conform with Microsol. Now, when you're actually bending them transverse like this, like a, you're basically twisting the decal, it is tricky and it takes a lot of Microsol and softening and a little bit of swearing as well, but you can get the decals to actually curve like this around the, the welds and the shapes of the turret, but it's not easy. Based on photos, I also doubled up some of the welds in some places because these vehicles were kind of messy and they're just slapping welds to fill up gaps, basically. I've also added a weld between the roof and the front of the turret, and you can also see there's a small weld along the entire edge where the roof meets the sides. And yes, I could have done this entire thing with putty like Night Shift would have, but that takes a long time. This was much quicker, and it's much easier for someone like me who's not really skilled with making their own welds by hand. I also added welds on the hull front where it meets the edges, also around the cast bolts for the driver's hatch we talked about earlier, and I also added them around the tow points. I did this a little bit later because I realized I forgot it, but these weld details definitely add a nice metal look to the vehicle and they'll look great after a wash during the weathering stages. Oh, and that cover over the viewport is also welded. Alright, now for the gun. This is the iconic part of the T-34-57, the 57mm gun. This is a part from Panzerart with a resin mantlet and a metal barrel, and it actually worked pretty well. The barrel was a bit tight to get into place, but it worked out, and I just simply super glued it in place. Quick and easy. 
And with that, the turret is complete, and that is one long barrel. All right, now let's move on to the running gear. The wheels are all standard from the kit, no modification required, but the tracks, they have to be changed out. So I have here a set of MSD tracks from Russia. Good luck getting these now, but at the time I started this kit three years ago, it was the only option. Much like the kit tracks, they come on sprues, so there's a little bit of sanding to be done, but it doesn't take too long. It's just a repetitive process because there's a bunch of sprues for the tracks. I think there's 80 links per side or maybe 78. The tracks pop nicely together, but we're gonna have to hit them with some glue before we actually start wrapping it around the hull. I use Revell Contacta Professional Glue, not Tammy Extra Thin, because I need a slower drying glue so I have time to get everything into place. Even so, I found that the plastic that MSD uses here somehow reacts really quickly with glue, so it was a bit of a time crunch here to get everything lined up and in place. And you'll note that's why I've actually put the tracks on in two parts. I first did the bottom and the rear curve there, and now I'm doing the top and the front curve. The result here will be the tracks as one kind of long oval shape, essentially all glued together in one big piece that can be removed for painting, and the wheels will be able to pop out separately for painting. And this is why it is key to have the idler wheel adjustable. You can see that I'm adjusting the slack here, and then I gotta move the idler wheel again to get everything lined up because I don't want the track to be kind of floating in space. Our final detail to upgrade is the cast MG blister here because it's not cast, but it should be cast. So we can add that texture by simply stippling it with some Tamiya putty. I'm using an old scruffy brush here that I don't care about and I'm just tapping this on so that we have a little bit of a rough texture. And then once it's dry, I lightly sand it with a high grit sanding sponge to knock off the burrs. And then we simply glue it in place with some Tammy extra thin cement. And I really glued in place because I want that weld to nicely melt into the, the hull plate. And yes, I also replaced the barrel with a Aber photo etch part because that looks much better than the plastic MG supplied in the kit. And there we go. There's our T-34 with 57mm gun. Quite an impressive barrel and I think it's a very cool version of the T-34 that I'm happy to have modeled. If you're modeling this specific version of the T-34 or you're just trying to work with a Dragon T-34 in general, either way I hope you found something helpful in this video when working with these Dragon kits because they're a little bit fiddly but when you put a little bit of effort in there they can produce a very nice looking T-34 in the end. And it can even look a little nicer if you go above and beyond and add things like an aftermarket gun barrel and mantlet as we did here. Aftermarket tracks, of course, nowadays you have 3D printed and metal options as well. And if you go with the photo wedge supplied in the kit for the tie downs and vents and such that really add to the scale effect of the vehicle and make it look a little more realistic. If you have any questions or comments, as I said before, please post them in the comment section below because I'm very happy to help. If you like the video, I'd appreciate you guys giving it a like. If you want to see more, you can subscribe for future videos. If you like my work a lot, you can support me on Patreon with the link on screen now because that is much appreciated in helping me buy new kits to review for you guys. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe, goodbye, and happy modeling.